Um, on one particular occasion, I had a, um, a sighting report form. Uh, I interviewed an OPP officer. Where was that? In Toronto, Ontario. Um, he was on duty and he had seen I had a sighting. And I interviewed him. Uh, I went up to the area and interviewed him. And he said that he'd fill out a sighting report form for me. And he'd mail it to me. Approximately six months later, uh, I didn't receive it. I happened to be going back up that way. I dropped in and met with him at his home, and uh, he said, uh, I did mail it to you, and I said, well, I'm afraid I didn't get it. He said, no, he said, it was returned to me. And, uh, and what address it was sent to? This one? No, no, well, I, I have it. Box. Yeah, post, post office box 54, yes, that's the, the post office box they use for all UFO literature. And most. was this deciding in Maydock? No, 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 this is going back six years ago. Is that right? Now? Up, Who was the uh, officer and whereabouts do you recall? Oh, good heavens, I couldn't remember. Uh, I can pick it up, it? but it was up um, near, um, hmm, there used to be an air station, uh, a weather bureau, uh, oh, uh, up near Petawawa. Oh, Petawawa. Up near Petawawa, mm -hmm. but he was one of the small detachments. But Killaloo. Yeah, Killaloo, that's oh, the area. Oh, Killaloo. Yeah, right, that's it. Uh, I think they've now abandoned that as a weather station. Yeah, yeah, I think they have. Yeah. Now, um, so... When I broached, broached it to him, he said, well, here it is here. He gave me the envelope, and he gave me the sighting report form. And I looked at the envelope, and I couldn't see why it wasn't delivered to my box. I took the envelope down to the postmaster in agent court and asked him to look at the post office address. It's correct, and he said, yes, there should be any problem. I said, well, it wasn't delivered to me. Well, he said, I'll look into it. Well, he now, what was stamped on the envelope for it to nothing, be returned? Nothing. Uh, oh, on the outside of the envelope was the OPP crest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there would be, but I mean, what... Uh, nothing uh, to... Unless uh, or not, uh, you know, return to no, sender address no, unknown? Nothing, nothing like that. It would oh. just return to the sender then? Yes. Was your name cr crossed out like they usually no, do on that? No, if I recall, there was nothing... There nothing was to indicate... Stamp on it and everything? Yes, yes, just... Uh, um, so anyway, he took the envelope and um, through a course of events, I didn't uh, get the envelope back and uh, he doesn't recall what happened to it. So that was just one yeah, And how about this telegram you sent? Now, who was that through CN or CP? or? I believe it was through CP in the information court to, um, I phoned it in to um, Sigwin, Texas now, to uh, Walter Andrews, Jr. He's a director of MUFON. And... Um, Subsequently to that, I had talked to him personally and asked him if he'd received the telegram. And he said no. And how long ago was that? Mm, since it, uh, I sent the telegram. Yeah. I think maybe just a little over a year. Now I've had uh, I've had trouble with my telephone. Um, I've, as a matter of fact, I did have an extension installed in the house and before I had the extension installed in the house I said I've been having trouble with the telephone I said I don't know if it's being monitored or tapped or whatever you want to call it I said before I bought, get the extension hooked up I went down to the telephone people downtown and told them my problem I felt that there was interference in the line call it what type of call it what you will <laughs> did you well, hear what uh, well you hear strange noises you know uh, like what, clicks or hum? Sometimes it's clicks, sometimes it's hum. So they said, well, they'd do a check on it. And uh, the um, service man phoned up and he said, uh, your line is clear as at this moment. He said, we checked it, it's all clear. I said, could you tell me if there was anything, uh, any monitoring device uh, on the line? He said, no, I can't tell you that. I, he said, all I can tell you is that it's clear now. I said, fine, I'll get the extension. So I got the extension. Have you any problems since? Well, since, but not um, not lately. I feel in the last three months. It seems to be what? Uh, you haven't heard any noises at all on your phone that would indicate to you that it was being monitored or bugged or whatever you want to call it? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, now that you mention it, um, 
I received a call. I was talking to a lady in uh, in Hamilton or Burlington, and she commented. She said, "What's that noise?" And I said, "Well, don't. It's nothing. There's no consequence." I said, "It happens all the time." And just at that particular time, we had happened to be um, discussing. Oh, I had given a talk in, in the Hamilton area, and. Um, she mentioned something about, um, was oh, this the trouble in the line that you mentioned? And I said, possibly. I said, I call it the loyal opposition. I said, I don't know who it is. Well, did you hear it and she heard it or just one party? Now that happens. Oh, no, she, she, she heard it. I heard it at the same time, but I didn't co comment on it, but she did. And how long ago was this? Uh, that was within the last few months. They mentioned uh, being monitored through physical and electronic. Now, the phone bugs, etc., would be the uh, electronic. Now, uh, monitored physically, how would uh, you describe Well, that? on one occasion, I made an appointment to be to meet with a chap. He was to pick me up in front of my house in agent court. Um, and I wasn't um, too sure how long it would take him. I thought it would only take, you know, five minutes. So it was a nice day, and I up my briefcase and went upside to wait on the front sidewalk. And I just got outside and the car pulled up down the street from me and three fellows went in. And they sat there. And I'm standing there watching them. Well, I said, either somebody's been monitoring my line or they've got some business there. And this well, is in your agent court address? Uh, this is in front of my home, actually. Yeah. So I waited and waited and nothing happened. Well, I said, I'm going to wait them and see what happens. So finally, one of the chaps got out of the car and went up to a, to one of the doors, to a house. I couldn't see what he was doing. But I thought, see, that's probably a ploy. They're just indicating that they're going to get some business at the house. I said, I'll, I'll just pursue a little further. I went in the house and got the binoculars. And they were all parked uh, maybe twice the distance to uh, twice the distance to that flagpole up their pole at the end of the driveway there, oh. see. I could have I could see them but 80 feet yes I could see them but I I just wanted to indicate some action so I got the binoculars and looked at them and in the meantime the fellow came back down so they just there's three of them in the car and I'm looking at them in the binoculars and they're looking right at me have they got binoculars no oh, I couldn't see any binoculars they may have had any but so then I said, well, I said, they're not doing anything. I'll pursue a little further. I'll walk down to you. And I started to walk down the street, and they just started the car and turned in the driveway and went, went the other way. Did you get a license number and make a model? No, I, mean, I don't think that's important. Three men? Three men. Now, then my friend came and picked me up, and we went to meet another chap, and I'm very sure they were following us. The same car? Yes. And how long ago was this? This was um, uh, last fall. Did you mention this to your friend? That you, you know, figured you were going um, to follow them? Somewhere? No, I just mentioned to him that um, uh, our, my phone may be tapped. Is he a member of your group? Mm, he's a member of the Toronto organization, yeah. And uh, is there any other physical following or surveillance or anything? Well, I... Uh, that you suspected or think? Yes, uh, a number of years ago, I, I, um, I feel I was, I was followed um, going up to Peterborough. Uh, and uh, I felt so confident that I was being followed that I speeded up to about 80 miles an hour. And um, I, I didn't go to everybody fast in the car I had. But he had a mobile car, and uh, he could move it too. But anyway, I, I went up and made a sharp turn and turned off into a camp thing. And uh, then I waited about half an hour. You took off? Took off. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see now. Also, diversion, delaying tactics, or on delivery of mail. Now, the diversion is what? Then, like the telegram, or the mail, or... Well, thing. I don't know how you could word it. If, if your mail is being diverted, like as an example, that letter from the, the 
OPP officer the setting report form. Uh, I, I eventually got the setting report form, but it was... By hand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And delaying tactics or undelivery of mail, does that all mean the one thing? Well, I said, um, on occasion I felt that the mail was unduly delayed, but you can't. <laughs> It's hard to say, I guess not. Well, it's the way the situation is today. I mean, if they're going to... Uh, now, now, when the three RCMP officers did visit you, how long ago was that, and what was that about? Uh, well, I, uh, to me, it was either uh, foolish or a ploy. Uh, three, uh, three officers came to the door, and um, they asked for me. My son called me, and they said, uh, we were investigating a, a drug case. Where'd you come to the wrong house? Well, he said, we have uh, reason to connect uh, your your house with uh, a case in Thunder Bay or North Bay, I can't remember. And I said, well, what's the connection? Well, he said, we find your telephone number written on the wall. Well, I thought, Christ, if they came all the way down here, sent three officers because my telephone number is written on the wall. My telephone number is spread across Canada. We're right in Thunder Bay. Anywhere. Written on the wall in Thunder Bay. Well, that's all he said, you know. And I said, uh, well, I, I, to me that would be worthwhile pursuing because, uh, you know, anybody that's interested in UFOs, I've advertised my telephone number in the papers. I, not recently, but in years past. And I've given my telephone number to, you know, numerous people. And how long ago is this that this happened? Oh, probably two years ago. Well, can you be, uh, I'd be in 76, what, in the summer, 76, the winter, or, do you know the month, can you remember? No, I couldn't. It was in a phone book, is that what they... No, no, they said it was written on the wall in a house. Well, they didn't say a house, they just said... Written on a wall. Written on a wall, so... Well, do you think they've, uh, uh, had anything to do with your present plan? Well, it seemed very foolish to me to send three officers down just to talk about a phone number, a phone number, you know. I mean, they could have got the information on the phone, phoned me up and asked me. And as a matter of fact, they did phone after, because I thought they were kind of uh, surly. They just, their attitude, it just it didn't seem to be right, and... Uh, you wouldn't remember the name? Oh, no, no. Um, and they, the one officer phoned back and apologized. He said, uh, didn't mean to do it. Matter. Now, what you would like us to do, I gather, by the letter, and we are doing because we've got, uh, I don't know how many other, not complaints, but submissions from people regarding the back home. And uh, it is a separate study we're doing. So uh, uh, don't feel offended if we don't write you within the next two weeks because we're putting it all together as a package, and then we're going to check and see what involvement, if any, the RCMP does have, or any other police departments, and what the policy is regarding the, the reporting of them, which I imagine you're interested in. Uh, are you interested in, uh, well, what are you interested in? If, 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 say, the RCMP do have a policy on UFOs, the sighting of and the reporting of, uh, I gather here you want to know what framework it falls in in, in national security. Yes, uh, if I'm uh, if I'm uh, as a <coughs> excuse me if I'm delving into some area that is um, potentially dangerous. Well, everything potentially dangerous, and that's pretty broad. Um, I just don't believe that. Uh, that there should be any restrictions on people doing UFO research. Well, do you think that some person, like, uh, in government, uh, is restricting? Oh, yeah. Or is concerned that somebody else is perhaps involved in the the reporting of and the, the information regarding UFO? Oh, yes. Yeah. Anybody that's been in... <laughs> active in the field no, no, has come across areas where there's no information available or it's or distorted or it's not available you know it's uh, as an example um, National Research Council where they have um, information that uh, I think that they are um, withholding um, 
the uh, RCMP certainly must be with, well, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure, I know they are, are withholding information regarding UFOs. But why or who? <laughs> How about uh, the army? Well, the same, the same. Yeah. Yeah. I've gone to, uh, I've gone to alleged or reported landing sites where UFOs have made, or have there have been indications of unusual marks in the ground, and I've talked to the local inhabitants, and they said the army's been down, and, and uh, the troops came out and spread around through the country, and that's what we're looking for. Well, they don't know. You tr try to find out which branch of the army or who authorized it. No, they Just that the that the military were were there. Yes. yes. How about RCMP? Well, I had a occasion to uh, speak to a fellow in Saskatchewan, a very spectacular case as far as he was concerned, and the RCMP told him that the same thing. And uh, he mentioned this on the air. And and who was that? Now, that's Saskatchewan. what we'd like to get, Henry, some names of, you know... Well, his name is uh, Edwin Fuhrer. F U R E R. F E U R. Yes, sure, yes. And when was that? Oh, good heavens. Well, it was a big sighting or something. Yes, it was, a, um, it, it was well publicized. As a matter of fact, I was in the uh, CFTO studios in the morning. It was about at a.m., and he was on the station in Regina. Now, I could see him, but he couldn't see me, but we could call talk, communicate back and forth. And um, I said, did any uh, government agency uh, appear to be interested? Well, they said, the RCMP were there, and I said, what did they say? And they said, they told me that that's him. Now, when was that that you appeared on this CFTO program? About how long? Oh, I'd say four years ago. I could find out the date. Uh, well, if you want to correspond further with us, you know, in, in my name, you know, send me any, uh, you know, other information with times and dates and names because that's what we, uh, you, know, you know, we need so we can interview people and perhaps get the name of an officer or somebody in the military that actually did say something, you know, to a person that, uh, yeah. you know, don't tell them <coughs> something like that or it's confidential or security or something like that. Yes, I think the, um, I don't know what the government's policy is. They, if I've spoken to, um, well, in the, an example, I was on a program on education TV here in Toronto. Uh, Dr. Alan Hynek, a noted uh, astronomer from the United States, was a guest, myself, and uh, Dr. Peter Millman from, uh, I think he just retired from the National Research Council at the the Planetary Sciences Division, which is the uh, depository for UFO reports, and we were discussing the subject, and I said, well, uh, Dr. Newman, I said, could you tell me what the policy is for the Canadian government, because everybody you talk to, you get a different story, and he said, well, there's no threat to the defense of Canada, I said, fine, so that's the only word I can get. Now, that, that's but they do admit, the NRC do admit having files and documents. The RCMP? No, the National Research Council. Well, they have, yes, oh yes, they have files, and files that um, are accessible to uh, researchers, but the files are no means complete, because I know of cases that have taken place. As a matter of fact, I tested it one time. I took some information down, and this was in 1969. I took some information down, um, regarding a study that took place uh, near Pembroke, Ontario. I went down to, to check the files to see if they had any information. They had no information available on this particular case, and they said we'd be interested in getting your notes by female. They said, fine. So they copied them. A year later, I went back and asked for that particular file. They said, didn't have it. But then I talked to the girl who put the information, the original information from me, and they had another file that they took this data from me. So they have files and files and files. So uh, I'm actually quite sure that NRC has got certain files that they're allowing the public to see and certain files are not. Same with the RCMP. 
Well, we, of course, are only investigating the RCMP, yeah, so if we right. find there's no involvement there, that is the end of our duty. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, I, as an example, um, the RCMP investigated an incident that took place in Falcon Lake, Manitoba. I know where that is. That's in the west or east end of Manitoba. Just near, near the Manitoba. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Um, well, this, the whole government was involved in it, the uh, RCAF, uh, the RCMP, mm, the Department of Health, because there was uh, physical damage done to the individual concerned. But there is no information of what the RCMP findings were on that particular case. Well, is there a file on it at the National Research Council? Um, or do you know? Uh, well, I know that the information that they have is what uh, the government would not release any information on on that particular case. It was brought up by uh, Ed Schreier, who at that time was member MP for the area. He brought it up in the House of Commons. And how long ago was that? That incident took place in '67. Now. The military were involved in it because um, Stephen Michelak, the fellow who was the, uh, the observer of this UFO, he took a photograph of all these individuals, the RCMP, the uh, RCAF. Oh, what if the scene? Uh, yes, well, they were investigating the case. So all these people have have investigated the case, but where are the files? I can't think of anything else, Henry. Can you? I'm just going over your letter again there. No, basically I feel that um, um, the government is in actively pursuing a, um, uh, a program of, uh, of monitoring UFO investigators if you will, whether they, they publicly admit it or acknowledge it one way or the other, I don't know. And um, unless it is, there's some statement that it is a uh, question of national, national security, yet apparently it's not a question of national defense because they've publicly stated this. But you feel the government, some agency in government has been monitoring uh, some or all UFA or, or UFO research. Branch of the government, what their policy is, who knows? You see, we're we are investing in the RCMP only, so uh, yeah. Well, I, it's a well-known fact that they are involved in compiling information on UFO uh, incidents. Not necessarily, well, they must be if... Uh, so if they're at the scene of one. Yes, uh, I was thinking of trying to uh, qualify this where they are the uh, policing agency like in Manitoba and Saskatchewan mm -hmm. where that's their duty. And to be an occurrence, they would be investigated. Yes, that's right. Where or down here it'd be different. Yeah. The OPP here and the Quebec provincial place in Quebec. But if my mail is being uh, diverted, shall we say, and the telephones are being monitored, um, which agency is doing this, you see? So, uh, to me, uh, personally, uh, you ask me all these particular dates, uh, you know, I don't know the, the particular dates and the, and the individuals involved. I haven't got, I don't feel I should waste my time in that, because that's uh, it's the overall picture you're looking at. Yes. If, uh, it, you know, These if they do it to somebody else, they might do it to you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I said earlier, we uh, I, I have the file, that's one of my assignments, the file on uh, on every person that has written in. Uh, there have been several, about the UFOs. And some of them are a little upset because we don't write them right back right away. In fact, uh, there's one I interviewed a month ago. And now I'm just getting to you, another person that is concerned about it. So, um, so when I get them all together, I'm going to put them in as a package report. 
And I think that's the easiest thing for me to do. Yeah. Instead of each individual report going in at a certain time, I can get everybody's feelings on it. And uh, and I might find a pattern of what is happening. Yes. Well, it's, um, it's taking place in the States, too. I understand that... Uh, oh, I was going to ask you that. What information do you have regarding the United States? Well, there are our place? Well, it's the same situation. Um, it's either the FBI and the CIA. As a matter of fact, one group has taken the CIA to court because they are not releasing the information. And what group is that in the States? Uh, I think I've heard this before, but... Uh, yeah. Um, GSW Brown sought to watch, they call it. Uh, it's actually it was initiated by one individual, and I think he's... Um, it's not a class action, but it's a, a mutual action by the group, GSW and the individual. Because they, well, you can read reports, and uh, they, um, I think with the CIA has been involved in it. They've acknowledged that, uh, in, involved in uh, UFO and um, commenting on UFO groups as possibly having uh, subversive uh, elements, you know, who knows what that is. That's a word commonly used. Or potentially dangerous to the security of the country. Well, as far as my um, loyalty to the country, I don't think there should be any question of it. My uh, father was a First World War veteran. Um, my brother was in the Navy. The other brother was in the Air Force. I was in the Air Force. My uh, sister served under this uh, man called Intrepid down in New York. Oh, yeah. So, um... Stevenson. Stevenson, yes. Yeah. Very good book. Yes, I've... Um, <laughs> My sister's been urging me to read it. I just haven't had the time. Yeah, it's very good. Very good book. Well, truth is, but strange and fiction anyway, it's pretty good read. Yeah, yeah. Well, could you tell me... Testing. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, zero. Because I've not, uh, right now I have nothing to do with your company at all. I don't even go into the office, my paycheck is sent home, I don't have to report to anybody in the OPP, and uh, in fact we've just lost contact with them, we were told yeah. that on this job, it's, it's brought something together now, well, and have two bosses. Yeah, the, um, I'm concerned with, um, also with freedom of information from government sources. Well, there is an act out now. No, I don't know. Well, I know. I've, uh, I met Jed Baldwin, the, uh, the MP, who's pushing that. And the reason I brought it up was uh, a number of two years, 75, 75, a uh, farmer in um, Brant County. Over on Brantford, eh? Yes, just south of Brantford, he was in Mount Pleasant. Um, Joe Border, the title drawer. Now, he observed something on a on a Sunday afternoon. He doesn't know what it was, but he, at that time he thought it was a stainless steel irrigation truck or a tank that the neighbor dropped. On Tuesday, it's on the ground. Oh yes, yes, it was just sitting in one of the fields. He, he saw it out the window on a Sunday. 
And it was curious, but he didn't give too much attention to it. And on a Tuesday, he was cultivating that particular field, and he came across an area of damaged, uh, dehydrated tobacco plant. And he thought that was curious, and he said, well, damn it, he said, that's in a tank line. This is caused by one of those UFOs. He tied, this is how he tied it together, because of the circular impression of the ground, the tobacco plant, the plants. Well, he called his brother, who's the uh, crown attorney for the area, and said, if you saw a UFO, what would you do? And he said, call the police. He said, you call the police and get them out here. So he called the OPP, and the OPP moved. When was this, sir? Uh, 75. 75. You tangle so fast, and all these cases are just going through my mind. But they found some residue in the, in the, within the patch of dehydrated tobacco plants. And it was taken by the OPP and turned over to the forensic science. And I know that I know the file numbers. I've seen the report at a distance. I've been down there. I, I started right from the bottom. I went to my MP, talked to the chief of the lab, talked to the director, the attorney general of the department. Doug Lucas, eh? Doug Lucas. Uh, yes, that's right. Um, and I still haven't been able to get that report. They're, they're just not making it available. So my last try. I've been poking at them for years and years, hoping to get this, this report released. Um, my last try was down at this Freedom of Information um, conference they had down at the St. Lawrence Center. They had Dr. Stewart from the PM's office. He was there, so I brought, brought this subject up again. So now I'm going to write him a letter to you and see if he'll post no. the thing. But this is what happened, you see. The, uh, for some reason, now, the, 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 uh, officially or unofficially, they told the, the farmer that was it was uh, lubricating oil. Well, he said, I didn't drive the tractor over here. And he said, if I did, the cultivator would have turned it over. It wouldn't have been sitting Well, he'd seen something earlier. Though. Oh, yeah, yeah. They told him it was, it was uh, lubricating oil. They told the reporter for the Brantford paper that it was consistent with latent damage. And they... They won't release the report. Yeah, no, I don't know how... It's not called the Freedom of Information Act. I, you know, I know what you're talking about, but I don't think that's the real name of it. But, uh... Is it law right now, do you know? The one in Ottawa, or the one yeah, in... No, the one in Ottawa. No, they're not in Ottawa. They're, yeah, they're, they're, uh, well, there's something in the post office about it. I know you can read about it. What oh, no, that, uh, you can go... That's, uh, um... Um, um, the uh, the law on um, individual privacy. You can um, you see your own files. See your own files. files. That's right. Yes. Yes. Well, is that not included in this new no, Freedom of no, Information? No, the Freedom of Informa Information Act is um, just typically that this um, analysis of this substance should be released to the public, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is in the provincial. Got all the provincial legislation. Well, they're they're both uh, working on it. Yeah. But uh, Jed Ballman, the MP from uh, you know in Ottawa, um, he's been working at it for years. There's just too many, too much documents. Each individual agency or department mm -hmm. just doesn't want to release for whatever reason. Yeah. Okay, then. So no, basically, uh, that's it. Okay. Well, I've got enough now, I think, to, uh, you know, put it with the other stuff I've got. And uh, sometime we'll get back to you. you know, well, believe me, it won't be in the next two weeks. No. No, I, no, I realize, and I, and I assume that if, if I'm correct in assuming that my mail is being monitored and my telephone is being monitored or tapped or kept under surveillance, then... Um, if it is some government agency, then that government agency knows what I'm doing and talking to you because, mm -hmm. you see. Well, that's good. Maybe I better run you over to your car. Oh, no, no. Yeah,